The governorship elections may be over, but not for filmmaker Ishaya Bako, who has an agenda for female governor with his film, The Fourth Republic. He tells us more about his desires to see female leaders in Nigeria with this film. Take a look. By the people is that money comes first the struggle to compete with the hunger man's thirst everybody hustling for the other man's following the conclusion of the 2019 governorship elections in several states across nigeria a nollywood film is making a case for women and the need for them to take leading roles in politics there is fire in you that i really like <laughs> will he risk to be stupid objection object war hoping for the better days This is the opinion of emerging director Ishaya Bako, whose political thriller, Fourth Republic, was inspired by events that trailed the 2015 general elections. On this film in particular, because of the social impact nature of the film and, and the social impact narrative of it, and also like the mandate from the funders as well, um, what we did was, and it's a normal process because I work in both documentary and fiction, um, was to do research first and our research most of it came from the 2015 elections general elections and the tribunals that came from there um, so we focused on like the Akwa bomb elections Taraba elections um, Ekiti uh, which was interesting zone, and then River State um, so after that we my writing partner and I Emil Garba uh, we started writing the scripts and then we had input from a lawyer Jake Okechuku and then John Mary Jidobi these lawyers have been part of election petition tribunals and, it, and it, it, or a significant part of the film it happens in the tribunals. And the reason for that is because we believe that the judiciary is, is the last bastion of hope for every democracy. Like we need a fair, a free and incredible judiciary uh, if you're going to have any kind of democracy that's, that, that, that sustains. I, Mabel King, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful. I will discharge my duties to the best of my ability. The film follows the story of a female governorship aspirant, Mabel King, played by Kate Henshaw, whose clear victory at the Kogi State governorship elections gets hijacked by the Serbian governor, Idris Sani. Sani's associates attempt to subvert the course of justice by eliminating witnesses in the case. So Fourth Republic is a political thriller. It's, it kind of follows the a violent election in a in a state in Nigeria. We loosely based it in Kogi State, so it's called Confluence State, because um, that's where I am from. Um, so we loosely based it there, and and it's a political thriller that follows the violence and marred election and the election petition tribunal, and kind of how the sides argue out their points. Um, and then there's a massacre at a school where. where well, we're not entirely sure what is happening there. There's some rigging taking place and there's some shady business going there. And then some thugs come and then they kill everybody there. And so the tribunal is trying to uncover that um, and also like get justice for the candidates. So we have the two candidates playing. We have Sani Moazu playing the incumbent governor, Idris Sani, and Kate Henshaw playing Mabel King, who kind of front and center is our protagonist, along with her deputy, Ike Chuku Obiano, who's played by Eina Wigwe. Um, so joining them is Linda Ejofor, who's the daughter to Kate, Henshaw, char Kate Henshaw's character's um, campaign manager who was killed. And essentially, like, there is kind of a race to find the witnesses that were there, uh, witness the massacre so that they can be able to win the court case. So Kate Henshaw plays Mabel King, who's the governorship aspirant, a female governorship aspirant. I mean, I, I think it was important for us to look for or kind of just visualize what it would be like for a woman to hold high political office. With a background in documentary and fictional films and his short documentary, Braids on a Bald Head, winning the Best Short Film Award at the 8th Africa Movie Academy Awards, Bako channels his desire to see more female leaders into telling this story. Does this movie speak to the, the role of women in frontline politics? I think to a certain extent it does. Uh, I mean, like, um, I, I feel like there needs to be obviously be more inclusivity. And I'll use our industry as an example, the film industry in Nigeria. I mean, like we have a lot of women that are doing amazing things. Um, and I think it's only for the better. I mean, from Moabudu to Genevieve Naji, um, to even like the new up and coming um, female filmmakers, Nadine Ibrahim, um, Emma Edosio, 
Um, I mean, even like Kemi Adetiba, like the, you have these incredible forces that, that are doing amazing things. And I think that that can be done in the political space too. There's also a message for the masses, and it's for them to hold public servants accountable and ensure that they engage themselves in civic activities. I think uh, I'm, I'm always wary about what the message is, and, and I feel like at its best, um, the kind of films that we make are kind of like a mirror to society, like, okay, this is what happens. Is this the kind of society you want to live in? Is this the kind of democracy we want to build? And it goes two, two ways, as in it goes for the, government, for the government and for the governed. Because if there is no synergy between those two, that disparity will continue. As you said, um, our society is volatile, our politics is volatile, it's very kind of high and dry, cut truths and do or die. Um, and rightfully so, because there's a lot at stake. Um, I think the film just tries to show it that, okay, look, because there's a lot at stake, how do you get involved? And how do you move from just the polls now? Because like now everybody is active in terms of oh, elections, monitoring, some, some have, even have political fatigue. But what we don't realize is that governance is a continuous process. Like if you're not going to keep an eye on, on your elected official from state level, from your local government chairman to your councillor to your House of Reps member, um, what happens on the, on the day of elections or for the time of elections is only just one, one aspect of it. There has to be more they, they, in terms of accountability, in terms of putting people to bear. We need to hold ourselves up to higher standards. I agree. Bako is going to show Nigerians what he's prepared but getting the right slot at the cinema comes with its own challenges. Cinema in Nigeria is, is still in, like it's still, I would say like we're, we're still like toddlers in a certain stage. We have what, um, barely 100 screens total for 100 million or for almost 200 million people. So I mean, there def are definitely not enough screens to serve the people to begin with on the one hand. On the second hand, we don't have a cinema culture. It's still just reviving since 2006 that the Silverbird Cinema is open. It's still just coming to bear, if you get what I'm saying. The whole industry that, that is Nollywood is based on video films, so it's watching films in your house. And then obviously now with streaming services, it's even more accessible in terms of your house. So in terms of the shelf life or, or the lifespan of a film in the cinema, it's also very competitive because once you're going into a cinema, you're not only just competing with other Nollywood films, you're competing with international titles. Last year when the film I directed um, came out in February, uh, it came out around the same time with Black Panther. I mean, like, how are you going to compete with that? Fourth Republic, which also stars veteran actor Bimba Manu, Einaya Uigwe, Sani Mwazu, Linda Jofo, and Yakubu Mohammed, is set for release on the 12th of April, 2019.